Hello, party people. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you a week of dinners. I hope you're ready for some food inspiration. It's less recipes. I've got a couple of recipes for you, but it's more like ideas on, well, I don't know. Who cares? Anyway, uh, these dinners I filmed in the beginning of January. Uh, this one I'm showing you right now is like a good luck January 1st dinner, so <laughs> it's been a while. So let's see if I can remember anything at all. I'm making a pot roast. Oh, I was so excited. It was my first time really making a pot roast. We're not big on red meat, but I have done it every Sunday. We've had a Sunday roast. Are our arteries clogged? From all the red meat? I don't know. Has our cholesterol gone up? Probably. Um, I'm actually following a recipe from Ellie. Not, it's not her cookbook. It's the Griffith cookbook. Someone um, gave it to me. And I can't believe it. I'm like so pumped about it. I love it so much. So uh, that's what I'm doing. So I just seared the pot roast. I guess that's supposed to trap in the flavor. Uh, I don't know. I've been doing it in the crock pot since the first time I did it. And it gives me more juices so it's probably true but the pot roast is delicious nonetheless um i cut up some potatoes seasoned them with my uh expertise seasoning salt and pepper oil and then i have these two bouillon cubes which i guess is the secret to making a good gravy i had no idea i'll explain more when we get to the gravy part but you're supposed to like tuck uh, well according to the cookbook you're supposed to tuck the two bouillon cubes into like fat in the roast. I don't know. It's all really gross. So that's what I tried to do. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's effective, but that, you know, you do it. I don't do that anymore <laughs> since this first week. I'm cutting up some carrots because that's what we've been, well, that's what I've been craving lately. So my family just gets to reap the benefits. Speaking of which, my family, I am holding on to Meredith and I will link uh, my carrier below. It's a boppy comfy fit. A lot of you have been asking and I love it. Okay, here's the gravy. It's amazing. You get the drippings. It's supposed to be two cups. If you have less than that, just bring get whatever much water you need to equal two cups. I didn't do that. You know me. I don't follow rules. Um, and then you get a quarter cup of flour, quarter cup of water, and you add that to the juices and you get gravy. It's amazing. No one ever taught me how to make gravy. I feel like a natural woman. You make me feel... Just kidding. I won't sing. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next dinner. P.S. That pot roast is amazing. Moving on to the next dinner. It is a good luck, new year, new aw awesomeness dinner. It's supposed to represent like uh, money. <laughs> it's supposed to be like good luck with your finances and stuff. I'm just throwing collard greens in a crock pot. It's my favorite way to make them. I don't know. I had a ham hock. I threw that in there just for flavor. And then I have this chicken stock or chicken broth, whatever that was, threw that in. You don't need to measure anything. If you don't have chicken stock, just use, um, oh, cracked an egg, got a shell in there. That's okay. Try it again. Didn't get on a second time. Who to who? Milk in there. I'm making cornbread from a box because that's how I do it. Don't really follow the instructions because I don't follow rules. In my kitchen, it's my kitchen. I decide what happens. Moving on. What was I talking about? The crock pot, ham hock. You get it. Just cook some greens. If you don't like greens, cook whatever vegetable you like. It's supposed to represent dollar dollar bills, y'all. And then we have the cornbread. What does that represent? I don't remember. Gold, I think. Uh, this sausage, I have kielbasa. That is supposed to represent coinage, the coins. I cook that up with some oil in a skillet, and I like to make it nice and toasty on the edges. Just succulent. You know what I mean? Uh, what else is in the recipe? Beans. We have beans, and those are supposed to represent gold. Did I already say the gold is the other cornbread? Whatever. Moving on to the stinking Instant Pot. Guys, it's my first time using it right here. I got to tell you, it's not my favorite thing in the world. It took me a real long time to figure it out. There's a huge learning curve that people don't tell you about. Also, not very instant because guess how long it took me to make rice? Like 20 minutes? If you don't have an Instant Pot and you're not aware, you have to wait like 10 minutes, let's say for rice, for instance, 10 minutes for it to come to pressure. And then however many minutes it's cooking, and then, yes, even more time, you have to let it release, natural release, and then you click the valve. It's crazy. I'm applauding myself because after 20 minutes, I figured out, eh, we'll cook rice for eight minutes. <laughs> After much Google research and YouTube research, Six Sisters stuff and all that. But you know what? I have to 
tell you too that I don't even really love the way that Instant Pot cooks rice. I use it as a glorified rice cooker and that's why I've kept it around, but really it's not my fave. I'm showing you everything, how it looks once it's finished, the colored greens, uh, what is that? Not cauliflower, it's cornbread. And then I showed you the beans. We use black eyed peas. If you don't like those, you use whatever beans you like. This is just, we have this once a year and then really whenever we crave it. Here's the finished rice. It's just white rice, it's nothing fancy. But it did come, it wasn't hard, so I guess there's that. There's the finished, oh, and I made like double because we were going somewhere to a New Year's party, uh, you know, really just to watch Ryan Seacrest, even though he wasn't doing the countdown this year. The Ryan Seacrest, who did it? I don't remember, it was like Sierra or something. Not my favorite, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> At least Mariah Carey wasn't there again, okay, hallelujah. Now, oh my gosh, this is my favorite meal. If you make nothing else from this video, please make this these zucchini look real sad and I was like ex inspecting them and thinking my gosh these are about to go bad but they were fine tasted great uh but Alex had just picked them up from the grocery store he was on his way home asked if I needed something and I said yes I want to make that oh what's it called okay the dish is called Korean bim bim bimpy lap bim pim lap it's like mm, bop hit the top uh, that's my memory link to how to pronounce it but I still can't remember how to pronounce it let's try again bim pit let me let me look real quick this is embarrassing be bum bop be bum bop da ba. you get you get the link now anyway I still probably pronounced it wrong but that's how Google pronounces it be bum bop it goes really fast okay um oh my gosh it was hilarious while I was making dinner shredding the carrots that go inside of it the be bum bop be bum bop <laughs> okay, I gotta stop that. Anyway, Wentworth was falling asleep. I've never had a child fall asleep just out of nowhere. And it was making Alex and I like crack up. And right here, he was trying to trick us, making us think that he wasn't actually falling asleep. He's so funny. <laughs> oh, back to the carrots. I The recipe, it's a HelloFresh recipe, and I'm just recreating it. And it says to make ribbons from the carrots. But honestly, you can... Cut your carrots however the heck you like, okay? Cut them in coins, cut them in at an angle. I don't care, but they do cook up really fast when they're in ribbons like that. Okay, another moment of Wentworth falling asleep, and it just reminds me of like when I'm watching a TV show at night. Oh my gosh, I saw a meme the other day. I'll try to put it up here, and it, it said something like, when you're watching Netflix and the show ends in a cliffhanger, and you think, I don't need sleep, I need answers. And that's how I feel every night. I'm like, well, should I get 30 minutes to an hour extra sleep or should I go to bed so I can actually function the next day? I never go to bed. I always watch until I pass out. Anyway, I've never passed out eating. It's just so hilarious. Moving on. <laughs> so for the bim, 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 I don't remember how to pronounce it. Now it's been like two minutes. I have the memory of a dead mouse. Jasmine rice is what you need. Well, you don't need it. If you have white rice, use that. You know what I mean? But jasmine rice is so fragrant and just adds a little bit of sweetness. It is delicious. I'm trying my Instant Pot again with this rice, I tell you. It's okay. It works. You know what I mean? That's all I have to say about it. Whatever. Um, then you cook up some meat, sausage. So it's sausage and then vegetables. I did zucchini, carrots, and uh, rice. Is that it? Is that everything? The secret is the oil, sesame oil. I don't know if that's a secret, but that's what I use and it tastes delicious. So I'm going to say, yes, that's the secret. Use sesame oil when you're cooking, even though I think with the sausage, did I just put olive oil? You know, do what I say, not what I do. My amazing seasoning duo, salt and pepper, <laughs> uh, you cook the carrots up and they cook really quickly because of they're in ribbons. And then the zucchini you throw in there, zucchini cooks up really quickly as it is so what I'm trying to get at is this is a very simple fast meal to make most of my meals are because listen I make dinner every night I don't have time to like sit around for five hours okay so the sauce oh yes the sauce is also secret ingredient this makes the dish so you just throw some oil sesame oil and then soy sauce I don't measure guys what does that look like a quarter cup a tablespoon of salt. I mean, that's not salt. It's sugar. Oh my God. I'll try to link all the recipes I can in the description box so you don't have to. I just go off eyeballs. It's your kitchen. 
cooking is not that serious. Just throw some crap together. It's going to taste delicious, okay? Oh, put some ginger. I didn't have like real ginger, so I had powdered ginger. Threw that in. Some garlic as well. Don't know how much that is. Tablespoon, couple cloves, do whatever you want. And then soy sauce in the meat as well. And uh, you're supposed to like brown it until it gets crispy. I don't do that. I just brown it until it's brown. Uh, Here's the rice, the finished rice. Oh, also have trouble opening my Instant Pot. That's another problem I have almost every time I cook something. (laughs) It's It's a problem. Uh, there's the rice. It's finished, and that's all I really cared about. But could I have cooked it on the stovetop? Sure could. There is the finished product. I did not have green onions or scallions, whatever. But guys, this tastes so good. Oh, if there's one thing you try from this video, I'll say it again, just to reemphasize. Try this out. You won't regret it. You don't have to use those two vegetables either. Was I clear about that? Use whatever veggies you like or have on hand or in season. I'm drooling right now. Wish I had some in my fridge. Oh, speaking of having some in my fridge, I think I made double this recipe. Did I do two pounds of sausage? I don't remember. But I saved some for lunches. Amazing. And of course, we always have people over for dinner, so I always try to make a little more. Moving on to enchiladas. I don't remember where I saw this recipe uh, because this is an actual recipe. Another problem with the Instant Pot we're going to have here. Anyway, it's a recipe of enchiladas, so I'll share that with you. But I saw, because I have been doing my research on the Instant Pot, and people are like, oh, yeah, frozen chicken cooks in 15 minutes, which is really 45 minutes once it comes to pressure and you release it. Guys, it's not faster. It's not It's not instant. I can put a pot of boiling water on my stove and cook frozen chicken to non-frozen chicken in a matter of 20 minutes. I digress. I'm so sorry. I'm very passionate about my feelings toward the Instant Pot. Two cans of enchilada sauce, any kind you like. And then I I added some green chilies because I had some. And then one stick of cream cheese. We're making the sauce for the enchiladas. And then I threw some green beans back there. You saw me do that. And that's just going to be a side dish. Um, Melt the cheese. Heat the sauce up. I don't know. It's going to be good. Preheat your oven to, I don't know, 350, 375, whatever you want. It's not serious, but that is, that is serious. When I cooked chicken for almost 50 minutes and it's still not done. I was so upset. So I cooked it again. Oh my gosh, my frustration with this, you have no idea. I'm like, it better be done this time, but guess what? It wasn't. So I had no more time. I said, we need to eat dinner. So I just shredded up around And I took like the insides out that weren't cooked and I just, I did what I had to. And that's what you do in the kitchen. You work with what you have and move on (laughs) with life. I'm also, I think, making like double this recipe too because, uh, again, we always have guests over, I'm sure, and then leftovers are delicious. Am I right or wrong? Wait, okay. I might be wrong because I know some people don't love leftovers. Guess what? I do. Means less work for me. You take the sauce. I shredded my chicken. I did it by hand because I didn't want to put raw chicken in my KitchenAid. You can shred chicken in your KitchenAid. It's a mazing. Um, Okay, I just put some sauce, mixing it in with my chicken. It's going to be the inside of my enchiladas. You can also add cheese. Oh, wait, we added cream cheese to the sauce, so you really don't need to. You don't need to double up on the cheese unless you love cheese, and then you do you. I did not do that, so there's that. I'm rolling up the enchiladas slapping them in a pan and we're good to go and I made a few more because I had extra and I think I even had extra you know what we had a lot of guests over for dinner tonight and I'm about to show you what else we made them because it's pretty exciting I made uh, the green beans I okay first we're shoving over the sauce okay Kim let's move on it doesn't really look fantastic but it tastes fantastic and that's all that matters am I right there's the finished product Amazing, nice and golden brown on top. Mm. Nice succulent meal. I actually recently made enchiladas with beans. So good. This is what I wanted to show you. I got these from Costco. These are like bacon mac and cheese bites. Oh my stinking gosh. Don't buy them if you love bacon and mac and cheese. You'll eat all of them. <laughs> so good. I have to stop myself from buying them. But we did have a lot of little kids over, so I made them eat most of 
<laughs> okay, we're moving on to this recipe that I saw on Pinterest. I just showed you the final result. And it was um, on Pinterest as like a Buddha bowl. I know those were really popular for a while. And they're super simple. And they're basically, I had that left over, the kielbasa. And then I'm cooking rice again in the Instant Pot. I don't know why I do these things. And I cut up a bunch of veggies. This is actually what we eat for dinner like every night. I just cut up a bunch of veggies and then cook a protein and bam, dinner's ready. You know what I mean? I feel like Emerald every night in the kitchen. Bam. Does anyone do that anymore? Does anyone even remember when Emerald would do that? I should start watching Food Network again. What does Bobby Flay say? Does anyone have a catchphrase these days? People just aren't as cool as Emerald. All right. Anyway, veggies are my favorite. It's literally like, I don't know, 80% of my plate. I just love veggies. Anyone else? Hands up. What am I making? A Buddha bowl? It's so simple. The base is rice. And then you throw on veggies and a protein, basically. I don't think I had any like fancy sauce with this one. But when I watch these like what's for dinner videos, it's more for inspiration. Do you feel me? Um, also... Very, very simple recipes is what I like to do in my kitchen. Well, you know what? Sometimes I do elaborate ones. Don't listen to me. Again, what am I even saying? This is my little Buddha bowl that I made. And it was good. It was okay. <laughs> um, every Friday night, I try to make something with the kids. Either brownies is what we typically make. Uh, cookies is what we're making right now. These Ghirardelli dark chocolate chip cookies. And, well, I got to tell you, those aren't my favorite either. But just making something with the kids, they look forward to it. Um, Eleanor and Wentworth, especially my little sugar addicts. There he goes, eating the dough. He is a child after my own heart. Yes, we eat the dough here because you YOLO. You know what I mean? Do kids say that anymore? I don't think so. Whatever. Yo, you only live once. You know what I mean? So that's what we're going to do. First of all, the dough tastes absolutely delicious. And the kids really find like a sense of joy and independence. Also, I think cooking is kind of like a lost art these days. So it's important for me to show them and get them involved in the kitchen to make them feel comfortable and confident in making food for themselves. Do you know what I mean? So when they're older, they'll do it for themselves. Hopefully. I don't know. I like fast food too. Just saying. Okay. I'm showing you our dinner from this night. It is the honey. What is this called? Honey, um, brown sugar, and Italian seasoning mix. <laughs> I don't know. Guys, I don't have names for the stuff that I make. I just make it. It's one of my favorite dishes. I've shared it with you before. So I'm kind of just showing you the end result because it is so delicious. It is a Family favorite, whenever we have guests over who eat it, they always rave about it. I use chicken thighs, makes it extra moist, delicious, succulent, so good, unlike the cookies. You know what I mean? Make my cookie recipe that I shared with you in, I think it was like a freezer meal video. So delicious. Moving on, I'll try to link the recipes below, but it's kind of difficult because like this video, if I were to reference this, you'd have to watch the whole video to try to find run one recipe. I'll try to write them. How about that? So anyway, I'm making the roast again because it's a new week and I'm just showing you like, hey, I'm throwing the bouillon cubes in there because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're going to melt and get the broth all just delicious anyway. I use this seasoning because someone sent it to me and I, you know, I have it, so why not use it? I think I ran out of Italian seasoning is what really happened. And that's like my trifecta. That's why you haven't seen me use it throughout the video. But if you want to season up your vegetables with, you know, any other seasoning, you do you. You do what you like. I'm very simple when it comes to food. Um, oh my gosh, I'm making gravy. Do you see how much gravy that made in the crock pot? Like so stinking much. So of course my kids love it. And I've been making mashed potatoes lately with the roast that I make. And it's just so simple. I just throw the stuff. Oh, careful, Kim. Like don't want to ruin your appetite. <laughs> I'm trying to show you how deliciously, uh, you know, the pork just falls apart. 
moving on. That was dinner. It's just good to see veggies sometimes. It maybe motivates you to eat some more veggies. I'm sharing with you a crock pot recipe right here. You take one packet of ranch seasoning, which equates to three tablespoons of the powder. You take an Italian seasoning, Italian dressing seasoning packet, and then a cream of chicken and a gravy packet. I had chicken gravy. You can use, you know, dark gravy, whatever that's called. Um, And then I add a little bit of water and chicken to a crock pot. You guys, this is so good. Um, It's something I don't make all the time, but oh man, the gravy's delicious. I usually just serve this with, again, veggies. And then if I have like frozen rolls, I've been wanting to make rolls from scratch and I have everything to do it. It's just like time. You know what I mean? Do I have the time to do it? It's debatable. (laughs) I need to make time. Um, Yeah, I didn't show you the finished product. Did I say that? Sorry, not sorry. Gave you the recipe. You won't regret making that. It's so good. Okay, moving on to uh, a little meatless meal here. It's called butternut squash chili. And here's the recipe if you want to screenshot that crap with my chicken scratch. I don't remember where I got this. Probably Pinterest. Oh, I got my big crock pot from Costco. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so I'm cutting up some, um, what are those called? Peppers to put in my chili. And what I have to say about this chili is, was it delicious? Meh. But what you can take away from it is don't follow the recipe. (laughs) If you have a chili recipe that you love, and I will share with you um, the chili recipe that I made in my freezer meal video because that one was top Notch, you guys. I know I kind of loosely followed the recipe and a lot of you got on me about, oh my gosh, all the seasoning. But I got to tell you, it was delicious, okay? Follow your instincts in the kitchen and it will get you far. Um, So what was I getting at? Follow your own chili recipe that you love and instead of adding meat, add the butternut squash because this chili recipe like isn't my most favorite recipe you know what I mean oh wait I think there were lentils in there too add the squash and the lentils and then you'll be good to go but for this recipe and most chili recipes you add onion some kind of pepper if you're lazy you can just add a can of salsa you know what I mean if you don't have tomatoes and stuff well that wouldn't make you lazy okay first of all you're never lazy when you're making yourself food in the kitchen that is not laziness that is awesomeness i'm cutting up the butternut squash even though it was already pre-cut because um i needed smaller cubes and if i ever make this again i will cut them into even smaller cubes and i used the entire batch which was a lot this crock pot is huge and it made so much chili i put half in the freezer we had guests over that day again too and there was so much left over, so I froze whatever was left. I think you need like a cup of lentils. I just poured whatever I had. And then the recipe calls for some kind of beans, but I went rogue and I just did what I like. I like black beans in my chili. I like pinto beans in my chili. And why not some cannellini beans? Why not? Do you like navy beans? Do you like? Oh my gosh, butter beans are so good. Not really good for chili because they kind of fall apart because they're so, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? delicate and well buttery they're buttery I'm adding two cans of diced tomatoes in my chili um yeah oh and then I had some salsa in my fridge and I just dumped the rest of that oh chili here comes the spices chili powder honestly I showed you the recipe in the beginning but I didn't follow it I just dumped a bunch on there it could have used more not gonna lie whatever I put on I oh <laughs> I went rogue and it still didn't help me out. I needed more. I need more. What is that? Cumin, chili seasoning, and then why not Italian seasoning? Sure, why not? Because I had some. Oh, I guess that's when I finished it off. Uh, whatever. Uh, chicken broth. How much do you need? I think there's four cups in a box, two cups in a can. For this recipe, looks like I needed four cups and that did me well why why am I stirring it with the world's tiniest spoon it's ridiculous why did I maybe probably because I didn't want to dirty another spoon I said "Eh, we'll make it work and sure enough I did just that (laughs) there it is and then I let it uh cook for four hours there you go on high for four hours because most of the time I start my crock pot midday not in the morning what are you gonna do about it you know Oh, and this crock pot, oh my gosh, I brought it to a family get together. 
you guys, I've never had a crock pot spill in my trunk. This one did. You would think this one wouldn't because it has clasps on the side and a rubber ring. Somehow it happened. Oh, just a friendly reminder, clean out your cans before you recycle them. I see a lot of people recycle on YouTube, but they don't clean their cans out, at least not on film. So I'm just reminding you, like, dude, you got to clean your cans out. Uh, otherwise, they won't accept them. Like, they'll just go in the trash pile. You know what I mean? When they sift through the crap. Okay, so here is the finished chili. It was good. Oh, it was a little thin, so I added some tomato paste. So there's that. Um, it was not the butternut squash chili that I was expecting because I've had it before, so I have to find that recipe and share that with you because it is divine. Um, there's some rice. <laughs> oh, and that is it. That is everything. Oh, my gosh. It feels like... We've only been hanging out for two minutes, but it's been 25. I hope you enjoyed your time here. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me and, you know, sharing a meal together. Hopefully you got some meal inspiration. If you did, hey, share with me a picture of your dinner on Instagram, okay? Tag me in it. I'd love to see what you're eating. Maybe you can share some inspiration with me because I pretty much make the same thing every night. Veggies roasted in the oven at three, 400 degrees. I don't think I told you that. Oh man, I roast my veggies. It's the best way. Veggies, 400 degrees, maybe 425. Salt, pepper, oil, throw them in. 20 minutes later, your veggies are the best they've ever been in your life. Okay, that is it. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you next time. Subscribe if you want to. Put a little happy in your day. Bye.